Thank you for the introduction. And first, I, I would like to thank all the organizers for their great work in putting together this wonderful workshop. I've been here since day one, and I have enjoyed it tremendously. So as requested by the organizers, I will talk about two new invariants, one for three manifolds and one for four manifolds. The first one will be a homological invariant for three manifolds that categorify the WRT invariant. The second is the homotopy theoretic invariance of four manifolds that take value in the ring of topological modular forms. This is a plan, and uh, I hope I can finish in 18 minutes to allow every, every people to go to well, either math cloakroom or physics cloakroom or topological seminar. So let's start with three dimensions. So let M3 be a closed oriented three manifold. And let G be a simple and simply connected label. So for most parts of the talk, you can keep in mind the simple example, which is SG2. And then let k be a positive integer, which I will frequently refer to as the level. Given these three data, one can define an invariant of M3, known as the witten rechetikin turayev invariant. And it has numerous interesting properties. And for the purpose of today, we will just view this as a complex number, which obviously depends on choice of M3, G, and K in a very interesting way. And it has a very close, closely related cousin, the Jones polynomial, or rather, it's generalizations to cover Jones polynomial, which similarly depends on choice of M3, a choice of group G, and the level. So what is remarkable about Jones polynomial, or its higher rank and uh, color generalization, is that if you compute it, you'll be valued in the ring of Laurent polynomials in variable Q, where Q is e to the 2 pi i over k. And because it has this manifest integrality property, it is kind of expected that this whole family could be categorified. And indeed, many knot homologies were found that categorify these knot polynomials. Is this a knot polynomial or a polynomial for M3 for three manifold? Oh, sorry. Uh, here I'm taking just M3 to be 
at 3. And of course, I will take a not k inside not of 2. Yeah. But it's also 11. <laughs> like two. Yeah, uh, this is capital K, and this is not a level. And R here is a finite dimensional representation of G. <laughs> So does the invariant depend on the link presentation for the surgery, or it, I mean, is it truly a three-manifold invariant, or does it depend on the link? In this one? No, the, the color change. Well, here, uh, I'm assuming that uh, this three-manifold is just at three. Oh. So for all the other choice of M3, this may not be a um, Laurent polynomial with integer coefficient. So this is a usual Jones polynomial, is it? Yeah, this is a usual Jones polynomial, or it's Not a colored version. Well, so here, R is a representation of G. Okay. Find dimensional representation of G. So it's a colored version. And as most of you know, that there are many interesting non homology theories such as homonome homology, homonome resulting homology, etc. And because the WRT invariant is a very close cousin of the color Jones polynomial, it's very natural to ask whether you can also categorify the WRT invariant. But unlike the Jones polynomial, there is no manifest integrality property of the WRT invariant. It's not clear in what sense that it should be categorified and how. So to give a concrete example, let's take M3 to be the length space, well, L5, comma 1 which is obtained by performing a Z5 quotient of S3. And then take the group G to be SU2. Then the WRT invariant as a function of K is given by the following. First, you start with 1 over square root of 5, which is not an integer. And then the next term looks slightly better as is the power of q. But then in the second term, In the second term, you encounter a power like this of k. And it will be very unnatural to write this part as some function of q. Certainly, it cannot be written as some polynomial in q. And the third term looks very much similar. So generically, the expression for WRT invariant looks like more or less like this or worse. So the question is how to systematically extract integer numbers out of expression like this, and how to have some homology theory that decategorify to this. Wait a moment. So this Q is what? So Q here is, again, uh, I have made this substitution to use Q as much as possible. But for this factor, it will be highly unnatural to write it as a function of Q. More questions? But if you do surgery kind of approach, this invariant is very straightforward, right? For the lens Well, phase. it's... What uh, that, uh, partition function going to be different from this? 
So it's straightforward in the sense that you have a surgery formula. But in that formula, you will have factor like this. And you will have, for example, summation over i that goes from 1 to k plus 1, etc. Then it's, uh, although you have this explicit formula, it's hard to extract systematically integer numbers. Does this answer the question? But interestingly, physics has some prediction about how you can maybe categorify the double invariant. The first prediction is that it might be a little bit mis misled to talk about categorification of double invariant. Instead, there are more fundamental building blocks. that I denote as z hat sub a of q such that the double t variant can be systematically written as linear combinations. this coefficient only have minimal k dependence. So I will later write down this formula more concretely in the case of SU2. But, um, and part of the prediction is that this new invariants of three manifolds will be labeled by elements in the following set. You first look at H1 of M3 with coefficient in the weight lattice of your Lie group G. And then you take the torsion part and mod out by the action of the while group. So here, lambda is the weight lattice of G, and W is the wild group. The second prediction from physics is that this z hat can be categorified. Into doubly graded vector spaces labeled again by elements in this set. And it is categorified in the sense that if you take the following alternating sum of the dimensions, you get back z hat. Here, um, in this sum, the i will run over integers. And j will be valued in integers module a possible rational shift. So in the end, this will take value in 
the formal power series in variable Q with integer coefficient with a possible overall, um, overall factor like Q to delta to the L to, to A, where delta A is the rational number. J runs over positive. Yeah, positive. Um, positive. Well, you, you can, so it's always bounded in one direction. So you can take uh, J to run only over positive. But then in some cases, uh, delta A won't be positive. That's fine. Uh, any questions? Yeah. So is this CA, that CA depends on the three manifold, right? It's not a universal constant. No, it does. So it only de the only dependence on the three manifold is through this group. So uh, through this uh, set. Beside that, well, I, I will later write down formula for CA, and you see that dependence on the three manifold is very mild. It only has very mild dependence on three manifolds, in the sense that if you basically know the first homology, you can completely determine the CA. So, yeah, and maybe it's a good idea to emphasize here that this kind of prediction is kind of powerful, precisely because the dependence of CA on either K or the three manifolds is very simple. Do you mean that it also depends on the knot, but it doesn't depend on it? I mean, um, it so, depends. so here, there is, uh, we are considering WRT invariance for closed field manifold. So there's no knot yet. You can, hmm? You're saying the whole thing only depends on the homology of the manifold with perspective? No, I'm saying that CA depends. Oh, CA. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I thought uh, you were And saying. all the interesting information is inside these fundamental oh, building blocks, yes, which I call the hat. In yes. other words, CA depends on and a finite abelian group. Yeah. yeah. So I will later write explicit formula for CA, and then uh, so it's it will be not clear. a U1 torsion in any sense. No, it's not. It's not even valued okay. in U1. Yeah. Okay. Just if and you compare this L phi one. Can we see some relations to the three terms which you have written here? Uh, compare with what? The lens space for the three oh, men. Um, I will later give you the z hat for lens space. And then you can check for yourself that this conjecture holds for this uh, example I gave. OK. So but maybe let's first finish what um, physics has to predict. The third prediction is that the hat can be used to build other invariants of three manifolds. Let's include the 3D index. And what I would call the 3D twisted index. The a suitable version of the Kashev Lo Vatanov invariant that we heard in Stavros talk. And Generalization of this invariant that I would call L P comma R sub B partition function. Which will reduce to the KLV invariant once you set P equals to R equals one. It's no longer 
see Oh, uh, you cannot see this. So what shall I do? Shall I try to move this? Uh, well, no, I mean, just don't write any further down. OK. Um, one question. Yes. Or maybe a comment. These are invariant of closed. Z-hand is an invariant of closed manifold so far. Yeah. Whereas the 3D index, as I know, is not defined for closed. Exactly. Manifold. So that's why I so put them in quotes. The future 3D so you, index. Yeah. It's uh, likewise, the KLV is not defined. Yeah, exactly. For closed that's why I put them in quotes. So you when the KLV, if it doesn't even exist. Yeah, of course. I mean, so. Let me say, the part of the it's prediction experience. by physics oh. is that this invariant has an upgraded version that can be defined for all three manifolds. Including closed ones. Including closed ones. Okay. And then the hat can be used to build, sure. uh, they can all be obtained by, uh, from the hat. Maybe I can make a comment to respond to this, that uh, when we define this 3D index with Moft and Bayotto, we were very unsatisfied that we couldn't define it for closed ones because physics, even then, 10 years ago, predicted that it should be defined. So the version we currently had based on triangulation is a very poor man's version. So we actually stated it in paper quite clearly that, that we were very unsatisfied that it was only for closed But it does lead to a topological environment. Yeah, yeah, no, it did. Really. But my point is no, that even then it was so. crystal clear that it was very um, limited context. And it should have been broken. Already back then it was crystal clear. Yeah. But are K and V also four months in value? Well, this I don't know. But, and okay. I'm commenting about uh, DGG index. Okay. What is 3D index? <laughs> okay. What is Q? No, you can say what it is. Oh, yeah, I, I can say what that is. But, um, okay, so, so you are, so there are two. As I mentioned, there are two versions of 3D index. One in code, which I believe is the uh, version that can be defined also for closed three manifolds. And then there is also a version that uses triangulation. So later I will see, uh, I will tell you what's the physical realization of the hat and how that connects to 3D index. But I'm still trying to finish all the predictions given by physics. Okay. Another prediction is that when M and 3 is ciphered, um, these homologies can be refined. And it can be made into a triply graded version. And the hat will also have a refinement. Now it will be a power series in Q with coefficient being polynomial in T. That decategorify uh, the triply graded vector space. Is that also true for graph manifolds or just ciphered fibers? What do you know? Well, actually, it's, uh, this is also true for a very large class of uh, plumb three manifold. And for other special class of three manifold, there may be some different kind of refinement. So, in particular, if you take N3 to be sigma, um, times S1, maybe now show your circle bond over S1. The refinement you have is actually quite large. So it has, well, um, in that case, the H will be a representation of SPG times U1. This would be an example. Yes? Sorry, um, I thought in item two, when you categorify, yes. If you replace the minus 1 over there by t, you have already the variable t. 
Yeah, so, so what happens you, is that... Are you, are you categorifying the already categorified? Okay, so what happens is that uh, the you I... You call that the variable T and not... The okay, let me explain. Yeah, so what usually happens in cipher manifolds is that there is some relation between the grading I and the new grading, well, maybe it's bad idea to call it K, the new grading L, in the sense that this space is only now empty when I is equal to L. Then in that case, the Poincaré polynomial of this homology can be obtained by taking over characteristic by remembering the two additional gradings. But this is actually not true in general. So this is only true for some class of cipher manifolds. So it's triply graded, but has no more information than doubly graded. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So triply graded always contain more information. Morally, but it's the same in this case. Morally, but I mean, even when the degrees are interlocked, it's usually interlocked with some shift. So that's also actual information. Sorry. Yes. Maybe naive question. So if we have three indices, i, j, l, we need three variables. One is q. Mm -hmm. Another one is t, usually the Hovano t. What is the name of the third variable? It's called the do. <laughs> <laughs> so Does it have a letter? Well, sure. How Just about? So that we, we, we know what to look for in physics papers. <laughs> well, actually, in physics papers, because the example studies uh, had this interlock behavior, what usually happens is that people still use the letter T. But one can, of course, cook up some other letter. Well, let's say B. Well, why that is often factor. used? Hmm? Sometimes you see a variable Y. Oh, oh yeah. So that's yeah, often indeed. used. Why? Why might be a bit better? So Q, T, Y. Okay. Yeah. OK, so. So why um, physics predict this, um, this long list of properties? Well, so one first consider uh, a, a following string setting. We count BTS states in the following geometry. We have n and five rings. Um, our time times the cigar times the three manifold M three, and we consider this in the space time. which is our time times the top knot space times the total space of the cotangent model of M3. So if you were here for Piotr's talk, you may have already seen something similar. So indeed, in his geometry, if one replace the S3 by the M3, and basically have um, what's on the board. And in this system, if one reduce on all these directions, one can obtain a quantum mechanics on the time direction. What's interesting of the quantum mechanics is that it has symmetries. On this top knot space, we we'll have a U1Q times U1R symmetry. And as a result, the Hilbert space of this quantum mechanics also carry an action of U1Q times U1R. So it will be doubly graded. But if you just look at the full Hilbert space of the quantum mechanics, it's usually not that well behaved. And one need to look at the BPS factor.
and then this will be expected to be topological invariants of the three manifolds. But what gave rise to the VPS states? In this geometry, this will be given by M2 brains that extend along the time direction. This looks like a particle in this quantum mechanics. And you will see it on the tip of the cigar if we want some eigenstates with respect to U1Q action, which basically rotate the cigar. And then it, so this is one direction, and then it will be a homomorphic disk inside T star of M3 with a boundary wrapping some one cycle in M3. And then one can classify such M2 brains. One just take the boundary S1 and look at its homology class. That would give you H1 of M3. But remember that this M2 brain actually ends on the five brains. So it will actually not be Z valued homology group, but valued in the weight lattice of the group G that is, well, in this case, taken to be UN. And another interesting phenomenon is that if you look at arbitrary elements in this H1, they may not give rise to any massless BPS states because there, in some cases you cannot form actually a homo homomorphic disk inside T star of M3. And it is necessary that this, the boundary of M2 brain will become a torsion element in H1. And taking into, taking into account the gauge symmetry, you will further quotient this by the action of the wire group. Then, the Hilbert space of this quantum mechanics will have different sectors, labeled precisely by A, by elements inside this set. And they are going to be doubly graded because this Hilbert space carry a representation of two U1s. And this is why we have prediction number two. Could you say that last sentence one more time? Uh, this is why we have uh, the you prediction. Two of... last <laughs> <laughs> okay. you, said, you said you've won, and I, I, I missed oh, it. You, uh, you have this uh, vector space that carry a representation of U1 times U1. Then you look at the isotypical decomposition, and it will become doubly graded. And those come from. Yeah. So, so in the lower space time, or whatever, M2 brain you have written down, do you see the action of the U1 cross U1 on that space, or is it only on the M5 brain? So the action is on the geometry. And then in this quantum mechanics, the Hilbert space will also carry this action because it's a symmetry of this quantum mechanics. Yes, I understand. I just was asking about where in the geometry this action is. Oh, uh, so Tobner space is roughly uh, the total space of cotangent bundle to this cigar. And you have an action rotating the cigar. And then you have an action rotating the normal direction. The cigar, is it topologically just two discs? Yeah, topologically, yes. But the metric is such that the top nut space is actually hypercalar so that it can preserve the symmetry. More questions? Yeah. Uh, 
So G is now uh, a Yeah, G in this case is taken to be UN, but U1 part can be uh, decoupled if you want. Okay, um, how about the other predictions? So now in this geometry we have a disk, as Renard has uh, remarked. And one can glue disk to form other interesting geometries. Uh, yes? Yeah, one, qu one question. So the boundary of the disk is a loop in the three manifold. And because the loop bounds the disk, it has to be null homologous or at least after covering. Yeah, know, yeah. When the torsion. Yeah. Why, however, do you care about the, the loop only up to homology and not up to, for instance, isotopy? Why do you not care that, that this loop is a knot and every knot Because the M2 brains can break and can rejoin. So in the end, you will only care about the homology. So the boundary. In this case, is a circle, but it can split into two circles. That's fine. Knots can also split and join, but... Mm, so because of this, you will only classify this um, up to... Well, so it can be classified using homology. Uh -huh. right? And I don't see any finer classification. Well, there could be. I mean, he's pointing out that there could be further invariants. Like home and Like the ones that appear. Well, in I suppose Pi 1 won't. Um, but this is only. Won't be. This part of it is already good enough for this invariant. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so Pi 1 will be too strong because it can break. And uh, I think. Well, I don't see anything between. Uh, the conjugacy such. class. I mean, namely the, the free home well, class. Well, conjugacy class should of the loop. also not be. Well, anyway, uh, I think this is already uh, as good as you can get, but maybe there is also possibility f to have a further refinement. Okay, so you have uh, two disks, and which can be glued to form an S2. And if you replace the disk in this geometry by S2, you will, the partition function of the system is what is known as a 3D index. And the twisted index is also closely related to the geometry, but with a slightly different supersymmetry background. And so this would be the 3D index of the closed manifold. Yeah, yeah. It's a version with a quote. I see. Yes. And this uh, homology will decategorify to v hat. And in this geometry, the decategorification is the same as changing the non-compact R into a circle. So for the geometry, uh, maybe it's maybe it's right over here. For the hat, you will change a time into a circle. And then in the geometry, you will have S1 times the disk, which is now a solid torus. And you can glue two solid tori in more interesting ways. You can glue this one with another one using an element in SL2Z. And if your gamma looks like this, you will have a lens space LP comma R 
as a result of the gluing. And the partition function of this system is what I refer to as the L P comma R partition function. So this explains roughly prediction C. Yes? In the case of not complement or manifold with boundary, the 3D index only exists for hyperbolic ones. Otherwise, it is not well defined. Mm -hmm. the, the series, the Q series, diverges. Mm -hmm. Is this going to cause any problem here? No. So I can later give you an example for L5,1, and I can write down explicitly the 3D index, exactly in that case. Again, you're referring to poor man's DGG version. So that, that's problem of DGG definition, not, not the conceptual part. WRT exists for hyperbolic or non-hyperbolic. Yeah. And part one, okay, two. Part I one is also for yeah. both hyperbolic. An and index hyperbolic. should also exist for non-hyperbolic, not complements, regardless. It's again this poor man's version was was bad. But also the okay. But, but so PR are just mutually prime arbitrary integers, are they here? So R here can be an arbitrary co-prime integer that is co-prime to P. There's no further restriction. So how about prediction number four? Well, what happens is that if M3 is special, there can be more symmetries acting on this quantum mechanics. And you can get more uh, gradings. In the case that M3 is ciphered, uh, or a large class of plum three manifolds. Indeed, that is what you find. You have additional U1 symmetry that leads to the additional grading and refinement of the hat. Okay, that explains prediction number four. And as promised, I will say more about uh, prediction number one. And in particular, I will try to If you explicitly the CA coefficient in the case that G is SU2. So, any questions so far? So let's first recall that uh, let's first recall that uh, the torsion part of H1 there is this bilinear pairing given by the linking form. Another remark is that using the linking pairing and also the killing form on the due of the carton of G, one can identify the torsion part of H1 and 3 with coefficient in the weight lattice with its dual. But what is this group? This is by definition home from the torsion part of H1 and 3 with integer coefficient to the carton of G. The T here is the carton. Because G is simply connected, 
the weight lattice is the lattice of characters of T. And what is this? This is nothing but connecting components of the character variety or modulus space of flag connection on M3 in T. And when you quotient by the while group, you instead have the kinetic components of a billion flat connection a billion flat uh, G connections so in other words this A take value in this set kinetic components of a billion flat connections Precise conjecture is the following uh, for G equals SB2. You have the following decomposition of the WRT invariant. So it depends on M3 and K, and it starts with a piece like this that is less important. Here B1 is the first betting number of M3, and then you have the sum over A and B, and the sum is over, again, this and any components of a billion flag connections. And then you have e to 2 pi i k times the linking pairing of A with itself, a matrix SAB. And the hat of Q. The hat B of Q will be a power series in Q with integer coefficients, with possibly an uh, overall rational shift. to be convergent when Q is less than 1. And to complete this conjecture, I just need to tell you what is SAB. And it's given by the following. a very simple coefficient. So it basically only depends on h1 
and the linking form over H1. Here, WA is the uh, stabilizer of the wild group, um, which in this case is Z2 at A. And in the case when M3 is L5, 1, you have H1, the order of H, well, H1 is Z5. And if you quotient this by the Z2 action of the wild group, you will get a set of three elements. So you will have Z hat sub 0, Z hat sub 1, and Z hat sub 2. And they are given by. As I mentioned before, for cipher manifolds, you are supposed to have this refinement. So I will give you instead the refined version. And for z hat 0, you start with minus 1 plus 1 minus t2 plus 2 minus 3t plus t squared q squared plus dot dot dot. And you can check that is, uh, looks like a power series in Q with coefficients being, pop, being polynomials in T with integer coefficients. Z hat sub 1 will be Q to the 1 fifth, 1 plus 2 minus 2T two Q plus 3 minus 5t plus 2t squared, q squared, plus dot dot dot. And z hat 2 will be q to the 4 fifth, 0, plus 1 minus t q plus 1 minus 3t plus 2t squared, q squared, uh, dot, dot, dot. And if you take t equals 1, you will get the unrefined version. In that case, you will have, sorry, z hat 0 equals to minus 1. Z hat 1 equals to Q to the 1 fifth, and the last one being 0. And then you can see for yourself that this conjecture actually holds. Where did you get this Z0, Z1, Z2 from? So these are obtained uh, using physics computations. So they can be written as um, um, some uh, contour integral. So more details can be found in our paper. So is, is there a reason why this series terminate? In other words, it's exact? Sorry, what? Uh, in general, Z hats are supposed to be power series in Q. Yeah, in this simple case, yes. Um, but in general, you are expecting power series in Q. This uh, lens space is somewhat special. And you're asking for conceptual explanation. So that's roughly related to the fact that, so there's a definition of, well, a proposal for a definition of Z hat that involves solving 
um, certain gauge theoretic equations. And when your three manifold has positive curvature, you have a lot of control on the energy bound. And then that will limit that will limit the possible solutions you can have. That's roughly why you have the truncation in this case. Yes. Wait. So would it imply in this case would it imply that Z hats are actually polynomials and not power series in Q? Does it imply finiteness? What you just said? Well, in the lens space case, uh, this one and more general lens space is expected to be finite. But in general, this is not true. So this is, uh, in some examples that are worked out in our paper, you can see that you are actually getting an infinite series. So this lens space is uh, rather special, I would say. So, um, another question? So so the, the, the QT series that you gave us the first few terms there, mm -hmm. are they false theta functions in this case? Well, I don't think so. So, okay. uh, yeah, okay. I, I don't think they're false theta functions. OK, maybe I have spent enough time on three manifolds. And that's more than enough. <laughs> Uh, I will talk briefly about four manifolds. 20 minutes. Yeah, in 20 minutes. So Unless there are more questions about three manifolds. Uh, just, I mean, just a minor question. The delta V there is, uh, is the formula for delta V or not? Um, delta V is related to like zero point energy in uh, the relevant BPS sector. So. And to compute delta V, you really need to figure out either this quantum mechanics or this 3D equals 2 theory T of M3. So it's not related to this linking that you already have. Yeah, it, yeah, it's part of the quantum part of uh, the information. So I don't think it's simply related to linking. In simple cases, there is observation that delta V coincides with what uh, cyberquital people call correction term in figure pure homology. But there is no explanation for that term. It's just observation. So in this invariance of four manifolds you're just about to tell us, <laughs> Uh, uh, do they use anything about the 3D theory you just described? Or is it a disjoint part of physics? Well, it's kind of connected. So the story that I tell you has something to do with 62 comes zero theory. Or you may, what you may know as theory X. But uh, there is a larger class of theory where this is a subset. These are 60 one comma zero theories. So in a sense that the two are not disconnected. So we are so, going so to if, more trend. If we knew exact formulas for z hat of A for all three manifolds, closed three manifolds, yes. will that allow us to compute some invariants of four manifolds that you're just about to tell us, or no. it's um, still new? Question. So probably another way to ask the question is that whether the z-hat form into some 4 dt t. And I currently, I don't know the answer. But, but they're more disconnected. There's, at least if that's a relation, it's very surprising. More than we'd expect the one comes with completely new information. Okay, four manifolds. So the world of four manifolds is, uh, in a sense, um, containing a lot of uh, uh, wild features and uh, a lot, a lot of basic questions in the study of four manifolds is still unanswered. So, for example. One question that a beginner of this field can ask is when uh, topological four manifolds 
has a smooth structure. slightly more difficult question is if there's a smooth structure, how to classify all possible smooth structures? Sorry, this is question number two. And as far as I know, there is this question cannot be answered for any four manifold yet. In the case when your four manifold is at three, the question is equivalently whether at three has exotic smooth structure or not. You wrote it at four. That's hmm? four, not S three. Uh, yeah. You wrote four. the right thing, you said the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, I can say for sure that S three does not have exotic smooth structure. <laughs> I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> okay. And um, to approach uh, these uh, big questions or more refined questions, you can never go wrong by inventing more powerful invariants. And another question is how to get powerful invariants. that may also be easy to compute. Smooth structures. Of uh, smooth uh, four manifolds. That's the most interesting. But can I ask? Yes. So, but I thought in dimension three, the issue was not to classify three manifolds and classify nodes by TQFTs and WRT and all that. So why in dimension four that is the goal, but it is not in dimension three? Well, in dimension three, I guess different people start with uh, different motivations. Uh -huh. So in a sense, the classification of three manifolds is uh, kind of settled. But for four manifolds, very interesting and very basic questions are still open. So maybe it makes sense to tackle these questions first, or at least keep them in mind. But we still do not know whether WRT uh, classifies three manifolds. It's not clear, and probably, okay. well, I will not offer my opinion on that, but. Okay. okay. So, um, how to get powerful invariant? Well, since I only have 15 minutes, let me say that um, one way to use, well, as I mentioned, 61,0 theory can be used to obtain invariant of four manifolds. So one general program is to start with a theory T in dimension higher, T dimensional theory, and consider this on R D minus four times N four. And if you shrink the size of N four, this will lead to a quantum field theory in lower dimensions. You will get a theory T of M4, which would be a T minus 4 dimensional theory. And when D equals 0, this is, sorry, when capital D equals 4, this is how you get, for example, Bonson invariant or cyber Witten invariant. And one can consider 
instead having d larger than 4. And that will lead to slightly more interesting um, possibilities. So in this setting, to make sure that you actually get invariant, uh, there is a more familiar story about topological twist. So let me call this the old story. You start with T being supersymmetric. And then you perform this topological twist, which is a reduction that gives you a theory T of M4 that is also supersymmetric. And then you look at the information in the BPS sector. Then you, you expect to get invariant of four manifolds. And, but there's actually an, another possibility that is uh, sounds even more naive. So I will call this new story, although it looks a little bit naive on the first sight. You again start with some high dimensional theory, and then you get T of M4. And what is T of M4? T of M4 is a theory, so it lives in the space of theory. With suitable symmetry or supersymmetry. And then you map this into, you take uh, you map this into connecting components of the space of theories. And because connect components is very robust and a small deformation, you expect to get good topological invariant of the four manifold. But, but this space of theory can be complicated and it's hard to really describe it. But interestingly, there is a proposal in the case. Sorry? What's the topology on this space of theory? So uh, there is a notion of um, small deformations. And that gave you some topology on this uh, space of theory. So um, on the conform manifold, you can be, you can have some more refined topology. You can use, uh, for example, some, some logic of metric. But in general, you should have this a notion of small deformations. So anyway. Um, you mean attention space to the theory? Yeah, yeah, roughly. And then actual deformation. Or all possible deformations. I mean, you talk about well, all theories. Well, so I think there are different ways to put topology on the space of theories. But if you just want to talk about connecting components, then um, all different versions should give you the same uh, connect components. Okay, so what is uh, interesting is that in the case when T of M4 is a 2D to cover one theory, there is a proposal 
given by Stoltz and Tagner. That's the space of theory. interesting ring structure, and it is isomorphic to the ring of topological modular forms. So, and if you leave this conjecture, then you can start with Uh, 6C 1 comma 0 theory reduce on M4 then you will obtain a 2D 0 comma 1 theory and then by sending this to the space of theories you will have an element in the ring of topological modular forms So um, let me maybe describe briefly for you the ring structure and give you a very simple example. So much of the structure of the ring of topological modular forms are captured by the two maths. One is the math for topological modular form to usual modular form. So this is the ring of weakly holomorphic integral modular form. And it's generated by the two isotopes series e4, e6, the modular discriminant delta, and its inverse, model the relation that e4 cubed minus e6 squared minus 1,728 delta equals 0. So this map is close to an isomorphism. In fact, over rational numbers, it is actually an isomorphism. But over integers, this is not necessarily true. So, and as a consequence, the ring of weakly homomorphic modular forms is 24 periodic where periodicity is given by multiplication of delta which is an invertible element but for TMF it is actually it has a much larger periodicity so delta will not be in the image of this map Instead, delta to the 24 will be in the image, and it will be an invertible element. As a consequence, the ring of topological model form is 576 periodic. Yes. The weight of delta is 12. Well, the so here, weight. the way that has sine weight is weight that this has weight, weight 6, this has weight 12, this has weight 24. Oh, yeah, so in this assignment, this assignment agree with the usual assignment of degree in TMF. Okay. Another 
uh, math that gave you interesting information about the ring of top topological motor form is the map from the stable homotopy group of spheres into high low star TMF. And for example, TMF in degree zero is going to be a polynomial ring in a variable J, which is e for cubes over delta. And in degree one, as a module over the degree zero piece, it is Z2J, and it is generated by the image of the following elements in the stable homotopy group of sphere. So pi 1 of S equals Z2. Mathematicians will call this the Hoff invariant. Physicists will probably refer to this as a Witten anomaly. But here you will be a generator of pi 1. Pi 2 of TMF is again Z2 J, which is generated by eta square. Pi 3 of TMF is Z24, which is generated by another fourth invariant that is usually referred to as new. So, um, since our time is running out, let me give you an example telling you what kind of TMF classes you can have in some simple examples. There is a very simple theory known as 60 1 comma 0 free tensor multiplet and it will give you the following MF classes. So we will consider some simple four manifolds like S2 times S2 CP2 K3 CP2 bar and the Arik surface. And your hand four will give you a class in the ring of topological forms, and it has a degree. In this case, the degree is simply given by three times d2 plus minus two times d2 minus. For s2 times s2, d would equal to one, and the TMF class is precisely eaten the Hoff invariant. For CP2, D will equal to 3. And in this case, the TMF class will be new, the other Hoff invariant. For K3, it will actually become less interesting. This will be in degree minus 29. And the class is actually zero. Similar for CP two bar, you can degree minus two, and it's also going to be zero. In fact, the ring of topological there's no degree minus two topological motor forms.
for the Arik surface, the degree is going to be minus 15. And the topological model form will be eta times e4 over delta. So this is the simply theory, yet you see that you can get some non-trivial topological model forms. For more interesting theory, there will be more interesting possibilities. And I think I'll end here. Thank you. Question about question one. I thought the should be stable like obstruction class gives the answer for the question one. Yeah, so question one is like partially answered. So when you have some invariant being non zero, you know that there's no smooth structure. And um, but so there's only partial answer, there's no complete answer. Well, why, why is that partial? The obstruction tells you. No, no, no. No, we don't know if it's sufficient and necessary condition. Yeah, it's only... Ah, it's necessary, may not be sufficient. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. Even I if... I thought it was okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, do you know how the T behaves under connected sounds? Oh, this T? So, yeah. in this example, the connected sum, if you take connected sum of four manifolds, you just get multiplication in the ring of top of model form. But for more general theory, this is actually not the case. So there will be more interesting structures. So it, so it is multiplicative under connected sum or not? In this theory, yes. So it depends on the 61 comes in theory you start with. Okay. Because this theory is simple. You... Actually, if you do connect sum, you get multiplication. But for more complicated theory, it's some other kind of uh, algebra structure inside the ring of topology model form. So if you blow up, <coughs> excuse me, if you blow up a point, it's connected to some CP2 bar, so it's zero. Yeah. Okay. So, so for this theory, you could only get interesting answers for minimal surfaces, or min uh, sorry, among algebraic surfaces for minimal things. Yeah, that's probably right. Okay. But keep in mind that this is a simple theory. I understand. And already, in some cases, when several within your variant is zero, this can be non-zero. Sure. Theory behaves like that under CP2 bars. Basically, the invariants die if you connect with CP2 bars, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Just like that's a hint that maybe it is topological, actually, not smooth. Mm, so for this, um, so for this simple model, indeed, it only depends on topological data. There's no dependence on smooth data. But for more general theory, so this theory is free. The keyword is free. If you have interacting theory, you expect that it contain more interesting quantum information. Yes. Okay. If no more questions, let's thank you again.